Today we're going to groom Max. Max is a medium-sized poodle and he's in the second puppy clip. This is a, a very famous way of grooming the poodles. Hello everybody, this is Kitty for Transgroom TV and today we're going to groom Max. Max is a medium-sized poodle and he's in the second puppy clip. The second puppy clip is a clip like a lion clip. It's not like with a shaved bum, it's also with a scissor bum. And the front of the, the head is meant to be going in a, in a top knot here in the front and then everything is pushed upwards. At the dog shows, mini poodles are styled in the second puppy clip because this is a, a very famous way of grooming the poodles. First we're going to do some brushing. Here you see me using the Yento Tangle Teaser and this is a very good brush for difficult coats and you see me line brushing. That means I'm just like letting the dog rest while, while he's lying down and line per line I'm uh, brushing so I'm sure I have every single hair covered before I start washing. Here I'm using the stuff because here and there he has like a little tangle in his coat so to make sure everything is correctly done before he goes into bath I've used a little bit of stuff it, that's gonna make it easier to brush all the tangles away here you see Gloria helping me out you see me cutting the wrapping bands with the special scissor I make sure I have each single band on one of my fingers and then I look carefully so I don't cut hair and the bands are necessary to protect the coat so we band the coat because then it stays nicely inside the rubber bands and it's protected and it can grow and it can come really long if you ever decide to do use rubber bands on your poodle you have to be very careful for the ears when you do the ears the rubber band on the ears you have to stick your finger through so you you are very sure that you don't put the elastic band on the ear itself so below the ear before we can bathe we have to do all the work with the clippers. Here I'm using the Heinegger style midi clipper. It's very easy with this clipper because you can adjust the length and this is at the shortest length possible. Here you see me like holding the two outer fingers, pushing them towards, not with not too much pressure of course, and then I can easily scoop out all the hair between the pads. The first thing I do when I shave the feet is I make everything short and I stop here the line where is the line well actually it's where the pads start at the back I create a line from the pads to the front and to the other pads so I can't really go too high because it's at the same length or at the same height as the black pad at the bottom after I've done all the front then I start doing in between each finger and I'm careful I go in between with my clipper but here I stop and then I go and do the other side and nicely with my fingers I like open the toes to go in between and always I against direction here you see me start to do the muzzle and for the muzzle I always like a, a, a virtual line of course I take my hand like this to the dog and everything before my hand I do against direction and here I'm using the Heinegger clipper. I'm using a 15 blade. You can use a 15 blade on show dogs or on dogs who have a lot of hair and on dogs who don't have any skin problems. If you have a white dog or a, a pet dog, it's better to use a 10 blade. A 10 blade is a little bit longer. A 15 blade is like very short, but if you don't if you don't have problems or skin problems, it doesn't matter. It can be short. It's important to me that around the ears also all the hair is disappeared. It's nice and clean so the air can go into the ears. It's also good because the, m the more air who can go into the ears, the less chance the dogs have ear infections. As you can see, I'm going against direction of the coat. And here you see me with my 
finger I'm like stretching the, the lip up and with my thumb I was pushing down the skin then at the bottom of the lips you can easily shave this part. You also have to be very careful if you clip around that area that you keep the mouth closed because it's very quickly the dog puts his tongue out and the tongue goes in between the clipper blades and you can hurt the tongue very badly that way so always if you clip around the lips make sure the dog's the dog's muzzle is nicely closed and here you see me going below the line and everything that's below the line is with the direction of the coat growth here i'm explaining the line everything is against and everything below there is with now we're going with the tail the tail i'm doing with a 10 blade and I'm going against direction with the 10 blade. To avoid having a bald tail, we do it with a, a 10 blade. I really like to go very short where the tail starts. So when I start scissoring the back and the angulation area, it's nice and clean and I can just put my scissors on there and it's correct and I can make a nice style. Here I'm lifting up the back legs to do all the, the tummy and the genitals. So once I start scissoring, I don't have to worry anymore about sticking out hair from down below. And here we go, clipping the nails. It's a show dog. Dog's nails must be quite short. I'm using the Showtech guillotine because with this nail clipper you can slice off a millimeter at the time to go really short. Let's do some bathing. As Max is a show dog and he needs scissoring, I'm using the squeaky clean shampoo from Fraser Essentials and I'm using the big volume shampoo as the second shampoo and then I'm going to use the big volume conditioner. I'm using the squeaky clean shampoo to neutralize all the liquids who's been used on Max and the squeaky clean shampoo from Fraser is also a shampoo that washes very correctly, it degreases very correctly and it makes that all the impurities un go away. It just gives you a very very nice clean finish and it's perfect for scissoring. If Max wouldn't have been scissored today I would have used the Fraser Essential Nurturing Shampoo and Nurturing Conditioner because these have more oils in them and uh, they are heavier oils for protecting the coat between the shows. It's also a little bit more oil and that's one of the reasons I didn't use it now because I need to scissor and I need to have like the volume and the squeakiness and so I decided to use the big volume today. As you can see with this shampoo immediately you have a very nice lather. I'm washing the whole body first before I touch the head. I do this because if I do the, the head the last bit I I'm not risking to have shampoo in the dog's eyes. As you can see, now I'm doing the head the last bit. Max is eating shampoo. Look at that! <laughs> so let's re quickly rinse it. That's one of the reasons I avoid doing the head with everything. I would like to do it really the last bit and then rinse immediately. Max is half a size when he's wet. <laughs> he's very well behaved. I don't want to take any risks of dogs jumping out of the bath so when I have to turn around to get some shampoo to do something I really like to put a leash on them. You never know. No risks. This is the second shampoo. The first shampoo was the squeaky clean and the second shampoo is the big volume shampoo. I like to have a firm grip when I'm washing. That means that I'm not like doing only this, but I'm really gripping. And when I do the, the legs and the feet and even in between the toes, I like to really have a nice grip because the skin is actually also very dirty and greasy because a poodle creates a lot of grease. And it's very important to me that also the skin is well washed. So don't be afraid to give a firm grip when you're washing. So here you see me rinsing the head. It's important that the, uh, the water doesn't get into the nose. So around the eyes, yes, it, if there's some water in the eyes, it really doesn't matter, but no water in the nose. 
you have to make sure the temperature of the water is lukewarm. It's just like just below uh, the body temperature. When I'm rinsing I like to like push all the lather and the foam away with my free hand and then it's like not slippy anymore, it's like squeaky and that means like when you, when you want to go over it you go you like stop that stop quick 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 <laughs> squeak squeak <laughs> and then it's fine to do the next step. I'm ready for my conditioner. I'm here using approximately three spoons on a half a liter of water and I'm mixing it with warm the lukewarm water with the sponge. The conditioner is, is like giving a nurturing layer on the skin and on the coat and therefore it will be easier for drying, it will be easier for brushing, it will be easier to main, for the maintenance of your dog. If you want to have a perfect coat this needs to be done every single week and then you won't have any mats, you won't have any tangles and the hair will be protected because each time you wash and you give a conditioner, you nurture the coat and you there you protect the coat and the coat can grow. Here you see me using the magic towel. This is because I won't use the blaster for this dog. The magic towel is a is a very fantastic tool to use to go quickly to get a lot of water out of the coat. It absorbs probably three times as much water as a normal towel. If you want to use the magic towel for your salons, you can just by using a bucket with Dettol and each time you used it you have to rinse it in the Dettol to make sure it's disinfected. So let's do some drying. As Max is a show dog, it should be easy to dry him lying down. That way he can relax and if you want to get your dog used to being groomed lying down, you have to get it used to lying down when it's a puppy. And then it's very easy and fun to work this way. So I've put a towel on all the wet bits to make sure the warm air doesn't dry the wet bits because it's important the dog goes from wet to dry under the dryer with the slicker and we we actually pull the curls out of the coat while the coat is still wet. If the dog gets too dry you have to wet it again to make sure all the curls disappear. So here you see me going a lot against direction. When you see like the legs, when you see the hair like going zigzag, it means that it's not dried or it's not decurled correctly. So you have to keep on using the slicker brush against direction with the warm air until when you see a nice line. It's very easy when he's lying down also to do the back legs. But Max isn't very cooperative for the moment, so we're just I'm just letting him halfly lie down. That's okay too, as long as I can do my work. The best way to do the legs is when you, in your mind, you divide the legs in four parts. You have the front, the two sides and the back. And you do one part at a time. From the bottom to the top you do the, fr the, the front part, then you do the side from the bottom to the top and then you do the back from the bottom to the top. And this way you are sure you have all four sides of the leg properly decurled and dried. Also the ears, it's very important to do the ears correctly. I haven't told you yet but I start with the slicker brush, the, the long one, the tangle teaser because it's a long coat and the slicker brush is very good for long difficult coats and then when I'm nearly finished I take the doggy man brush and the doggy man brush is a finer brush or finishing for drying it has a very good result. Here we have half finished Max. And I'm very sorry for Max, but normally I always do the ears before the bath, but you see, even professionals can forget. I did forget the ears before the bath, but it's not it's not such a bad thing. It's just it it's nicer to do it before, but if it's after the bath, it's fine too. So here you see me taking out the hair from inside the ears. I've used the Showtech powder to easily take out the excess of hair. So I'm using the tweezers to pull out all the hairs from around the ears and inside the ears. 
If you use the tweezers together with the Showtech ear powder, you can take all the hairs out very easily. Sometimes it's difficult, but it makes it easy when you take the below ear and you like stretch it, and then it's easier to go in with the tweezers to, to pluck out all the hairs. And here you see me using the Showtech ear wipe to make the outside of the ear clean. I'm just gonna make a line at the top line and do the first part of his top knot. So it's just a loose top knot and I did go three times around. Here you see me taking the half of the top knot and taking a small part of hair in the middle of the top knot and then I'm holding the small part of the hair from the middle and I'm pulling it and at the same time I'm taking the band and pushing it forward and this is going to make a nice bubble. And then the next part, try to relax Max and I'm going to take a next part and just make another band and also three times turning the band around the hair. And here I'm dividing the hair from the ears and then trying to have another band. And for me it's important to have nice and clear, clean lines in between the hair. And also three times. I don't do it more or less, because if you do it less the bands are just going to fall out. And if you do it more and the dog starts scratching, it's possible that you have breaking in the hair. If you do it three times around with a miniature poodle or a medium poodle, it's fine. If you do a standard poodle, maybe two times, if you have a thick, thick, thick hair would be enough, but an average three times as normal. If you would turn it around five or six times, it would be very, very tough and, and the elastic band, as soon as the dog moves or scratch or it rolls in the ground, you can have hair breakage. I prefer that the band comes loose, then the coat breaks down. So that's why I only do it three times. And here you see me doing the middle and I take the middle from the front and the middle from the back and I make another band. And here you see me getting ready to band the ears. It's very important when you band the ears, you feel the ear where it is and you put the elastic band just below the ear and then you can go through the ear with uh, the comb, with the point of the comb, so you are sure, a hundred positive sure, the elastic band is not on the ear. If you per accidentally put the elastic band on the ear, the ear will fall off. And it's a very, very, very bad thing. You know, it's very dangerous, so be very careful with putting bands in the ears. And now let's do some real work. Let's do the scissoring. Also with poodles, I like to start in the front. First make sure the hair is nicely brushed and nicely fluffed up. Brush and comb everything down. And I start in the front because balancing the front is the most difficult. I start at the front of the front legs because I want to have the dog as short as possible. So all the front of the front legs is short and then the back of the front legs is very long. When we have the leg, as you can see here in the drawing, you have the front leg, the hair in the front is short, so actually you are moving the front leg towards the back of the dog. And then we do the same thing with the back leg. By grooming, we move the placing of the back leg more to the front, and then the dog looks shorter. Here I'm doing the lines and I'm going from the chest as much as possible down in one straight line. No crooked line, no bent line, no banana feet. Straight from here to the front of the toes in a straight line. And that's my base. From there then I can do all the other bits of the dog. But the base I make a long time doing this because for me it's the most important. Once I have the straight line, I make it here at the chest, at the neck of the dog. When I see it from the profile, I see the nice rounding of the whole chest. Where the ear is, 
I make it short here so I have the curved of the chest. Here you see me scissoring, combing, scissoring, combing, scissoring, combing and repeat. And I will do this until all the hair is straight and nicely finished. I leave as much as possible the legs on the table so I don't really pick the legs up to groom the legs because if I do that it goes wrong then the, I have bent legs instead of straight legs so that's why I pref preferably leave the dogs with the feet with the legs on the table to groom you have many groomers who can lift the legs up for grooming but if I do that it goes wrong so I don't and I don't recommend it as well for me it's very important that here at the shoulder it's quite short then for me you can really see the chest then you can still work on the front lines on the front you know the hurry the vertical line from the top to the bottom for creating the best finish is actually very much combing and scissoring combing and scissoring and when you use the comb it's going straight very deep in the coat and all the hairs are being horizontally taken with the comb so at the tops we can scissor it and it can stay scissored nicely clean scissored it's the only way of having a very good finish by combing all the way through you see me using the feather light comb this is a aluminium comb it's extra extra light and it has wide teeth and it's perfect for second puppy clip Okay, here you see me doing the back. You remember when I said about the clipping the tail? Now I can just put my scissors at the side of the tail. The top of the back legs, it has to be straight, quite wide and not straight, but I mean level, horizontal. It just has to not be rounded, just keep it straight. And then later we can do some rounding off when we finish the back legs, but we start with a flat part. I've done the part of the, the top of the back legs because I want to finish the whole body. Without doing the top of the back legs, I really can't finish the body. So now I, I can see how long the dog is, how thick the dog is, and now I can continue doing the body. The body is actually everything from the bottom to the top. First I did the front legs, and then I'm going to do the rounding, and I'm going to do everything towards upwards, towards the top line. So it needs to be round, wherever way you look at it, it needs to be round. If you look from the front you see around, if you look from the side you see around. And if you can't do it with a straight scissors, you can do it with a chunker. Sometimes it's easier to, re to use a chunker, it also has a, a softer finish. And sometimes for modeling it's just um, safer or easier to use the chunker. And when you finish the body then you can start the back legs. I like it when I take the back legs, I take everything from the back pad, if this is the pad, if, these, if this is the pad, everything above the pad, I like to really really shorten that as much as possible. And then I have a straight lane line from the pads to the hock. And the hock is quite uh, high from the poodle. Everything at the butt, at the legs, I make very short, as short as possible. And I don't know if you can see it, but where I'm working now, at the bottom, it's a flat area. For the tail, I'm just combing everything to the front, turning the tail around, holding the tail between my two fingers and cutting the hair off. Then I can fluff up everything and make a nice ball. And I didn't do a spray up very much, but I sprayed up just a little bit to make the top line look perfect. I'm scissoring now to make sure you have a good top line. And as the top line from Max is damaged, I'm making it a little short because for the moment Max is not going to dog shows and we're just taking care of the top line very well. We we're giving him extra products, extra oils to protect his top line so the top line can grow back and he's show ready in a few months. On the drawing I can also show you just below the tail there's no extra hair. The angulation comes from the bottom of the back legs and the hock where there's a lot of hair and this actually makes the angulation. As well here at this side you can see that the top of the back legs is a straight flat area. 
And here you see me explaining that you need to go towards the front of the dog and then you can take like the angulation with you to the front of the dog. Here I'm doing more of the top line. I'm doing it not with lacquer, I'm doing it with the thick and thicker from Chris Christiansen. I'm doing this because the thick and thicker you can easily brush out afterwards and I'm not really doing a perfect uh, top line. I just need to scissor at the sides of the body and to do this I need to do a little bit of a spray up, a light spray up. I first did from the front to the back and now I'm doing the front part again and I'm doing the front part again from the back of the front part to the top, to the front. And each time I'm combing, combing and I'm making a little layer and each time I'm spraying with the thick and thicker spray. And I think also because the top line behind the head is like damaged, uh, I think I'm also going to cut a little bit off the top line. And now we can do some finishing. As the dog moves, I'm not afraid of going back to certain parts. So the dog here was moving or I saw it from a different view from the front view and I saw something sticking out and here I'm going again back to the back legs. <laughs> Maybe it's also a good idea to see the dog running, have the dog relax outside for a minute and when you see the dog in movement and it's it's really very important or the dog has to go to a dog show if you see the dog move you can see lots of different things which you wouldn't see if you, the dog is standing still at the table all the time. So don't be afraid of starting all over again and going over your lines and making certain things shorter. And now with the hairs uh, of the top line uh, being fixed, I can do the sides of the top line. And here you saw me cut a part of the head. And I'm also going to do the points of the top line. That's also going to be better for making the top line grow, giving it some time to grow back. The last bits is happening. Here you can see the damaged top line and I'm trying to scissor the little bits sticking out so the top line can grow back. And here you see Max, the poodle, is nearly finished. I'm just doing the finishing touches, making sure it's all in balance, doing some combing. Taking a step back is actually a very good thing. Step back, have a look from a distance from two meters, see what happens when Max moves, just step back and see the outline. I've enjoyed working on Max very much. Here you can see some pictures of Max the Poodle. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions you're very welcome to write them down below. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Bye.